For thousands of years, humanity looked up to the sky, the stars, the gods, believing that motion belonged only to them. The sun rose, the tides obeyed, the wind whispered, divine, untouchable, infinite. But one day, a thought broke through the silence. What if motion could be created? That question, simple, heretical, unstoppable, became the spark that changed everything. The spark that turned light into motion. In the silence after creation, light still remembered its purpose. It reached across the void, searching not for gods, but for hands brave enough to shape it. For the first time, humanity no longer prayed to motion. It studied it. They watched the sun rise, not as a miracle, but as an equation of heat and orbit. The tide was no longer a mood of the gods, but a rhythm of gravity. And somewhere, deep within the golden dust of understanding, a new voice whispered, If motion can be understood, it can be created. This was the moment light began to fracture, not to disappear, but to transform. Bronze turned under sunlight, water carved through stone. The first gears, crude and trembling, awoke beneath trembling hands. They did not roar, they hum, as if shy to disturb the silence of divinity. Each turn revealed something sacred. That movement was not chaos, but conversation. A law written in symmetry, a code hidden in weight and balance, And humanity, for the first time, listen. Archimedes became its first interpreter. Where others saw water, he saw leverage. Where others saw rest, he saw potential. He spoke in the quiet language of torque and resistance, and the universe, for a fleeting second, answered. Give me a place to stand, he said, and I will move the earth. He did not mean defiance. He meant understanding. That to move something greater than yourself, you must first understand its center. The divine flame dimmed, not from loss, but from surrender. Light no longer belonged to heaven. It belonged to thought. And in that exchange, humanity earned its first permission to create. The first machine was not made of metal. It was made of revelation, of curiosity, friction, and faith. Not in gods, but in geometry. As the wheel turned, time followed. From temples to workshops, from prayers to principles. The world began to move again, this time by choice. And so it was written, from light came motion, from motion, invention. And in the quiet hum of the first machine, Humanity heard the echo of its own becoming. That echo of becoming, it was not a prayer. It was a blueprint. And it was not forged in the heavens, but in the grit of the earth, in the salt-strewn air of a Syracuse workshop. Here, the philosopher's mind became the engineer's hand. Imagine that place. Dust motes dancing in shafts of golden light. 
the air thick with the smell of bronze, aged wood, and the distant sea. This was the first laboratory where light, understanding, was hammered into law. Archimedes did not see a simple crowbar. He saw a negotiation with gravity. He saw the fulcrum, the pivot point, not as a piece of stone, but as the universe's center of balance, localized. Give me a place to stand, he had claimed. Now, in his workshop, he built that place. He looked at the immense weight of a ship, immobile on the shore, defiant. The gods might move it with a storm. Archimedes would move it with geometry. He sketched the pulley. It was not magic, it was mathematics. A way to fold reality, to divide an impossible weight into a dozen possible efforts. With the turn of a single rope, a single man commanded the work of 100, the impossible, became calculation. And then, the translation of motion itself, how to move water up, defy the very flow of nature. He conceived the algorithm made of metal, the screw. With every turn, the rotational, the circle, the divine, was translated into the linear, the human, the path. It was a new language, a spiral sentence that told water where to go. This was the profound shift. The tools, the lever, the pulley, the screw, were merely the artifacts. The true machine was the method. For the first time, human hands did not just build. They predicted, they calculated, they experimented, they failed, and they tried again. The workshop was no longer a place of mere craft. It became a laboratory of thought. Diagrams on parchment were not wishes. They were contracts, signed with the physical world. The sound of a perfectly seated gear. The soft groan of a rope taking a strain. This was the new liturgy. Archimedes, the prophet of leverage, had given humanity more than tools. He had given them a grammar, the first complete sentences of invention. The primitive foundations were laid, not as an end, but as a permission. The permission to compose motion. The permission to build the future. And so, the future was permitted. But that small bronze gear held a secret far greater than its own mechanics. The lever would rust, the pulley would fray, the screw itself would be buried by time. They were only artifacts. The true first machine was indestructible. It was the method, the algorithm that built the tools, the sudden irreversible reorganization of the human mind, the process of prediction, of experimentation, of failure, and of repetition. This was the core invention. A machine made not of bronze, but of thought. And unlike bronze, this machine could copy itself. From Syracuse it spread, not as a tool, but as a way of seeing. It moved through the libraries of Alexandria. It slept in the workshops of Rome. It waited in the formulas of scholars. It was a new kind of light, a light generated by the mind, not just for it. The first light, the divine showed humanity the shape of the universe. This second light, the mechanical, gave humanity the power to change that shape. This was the final exchange. Understanding did not just replace worship, it became the new form of it. The temples built to the gods were replaced by laboratories built to the laws. The divine flame did not die. It was simply translated from the untouchable heavens to the determined human hand. Invention was no longer an accident. It was a choice, 
a system. And that system, that first true machine, is the echo that defines us. The echo of the mind, remaking the world in its own image. And somewhere in Florence, centuries later, another mind would dream of motion with wings. If this journey into the mind of invention resonated with you, like this video and subscribe to follow the full series. Your support allows us to continue translating these epic ideas into light and motion. Next, we journey to the Renaissance to discover how machines learn to fly. Thank you for watching.